Just keep firing, just keep firing, just keep firing, just keep firing. Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day today. Today we'll be taking another look at the recon and updating our build for the Pathogen DLC. There are many ways to play the vital role of the recon. One of the perhaps lesser known ways is to do so with a zero cooldown build. With how the perks are calculated in this game, you get diminishing returns the more of the same perks you apply to one ability, but this build completely circumvents that problem, allowing us to gain a massive amount of cooldown reduction without even using any cooldown reduction perks. And through the power of our pups and a plethora of ammo our support drone spits out, we can make our pug group a happy pug group. Let's look at the abilities real quick. Our first ability is the pups, but we'll be taking the Bloodhounds replacer perk for it. With Bloodhounds, you mark the target, revealing them and lowering their defenses. The defense's lowered amount is about 25% extra damage for you and your team, which is a big plus. It has unlimited duration and no cooldown, so that means no duration perks or no cooldown perks. This means that we don't have to invest into Bloodhounds in order for it to be effective, freeing up space in our perk grid. Our second ability is the Support Drone. You deploy a drone at the targeted location and while active, it will resupply your team with ammo clips. Standing near the drone will also provide the team with an accuracy and stability buff, while also granting a small amount of healing every time an ally kills an enemy. The healing isn't that great though. 10 health for every kill is pretty much worthless if you have a health pool of 1500, so we'll be mainly using it for the ammo. And the last ability is the passive, which is called Focus. Getting two headshot kills within 10 seconds grants the recon a stack of Focus, increasing accuracy and stability by 10% for each stack. This stacks up to three times for a total of 30% extra accuracy and stability. Before we head into the perk grid, only a small number of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. It's free and would really help out a small YouTuber like myself. Thanks. When we head into the perk grid, you will see our replacer perk for our pups. The first thing we're going to be adding is Distracting Howl. Distracting Howl lowers the movement speed of enemies by 30% as long as they are marked by our bloodhounds. This is a great way to CC those big red elites, as the slow will make sure your allies have enough time to hose them down with bullets or get out to safety. This perk also synergizes well with other slow abilities like the text charged coils and the dog's suppression station. Another great perk that synergizes well with Bloodhounds is Red is Dead. Red is Dead gives the entire team 10% extra damage to enemies that are revealed, which is what Bloodhounds does. It reveals targets, so the damage increase when using Bloodhounds is actually 35%. When looking at the other ability, the Support Drone, you'll see that we're only taking two perks with us. Extended Duration 4 and Extended Duration 2. This will give our Support Drone a total of 35% extra duration, which translates into enough time for the drone to spit out exactly four ammo clips. Because of the amount of clips you give your team, it is highly unlikely that they'll ever need a pit stop at an ammo crate. Wait, what am I saying? With this build, your team will never even have to reload because we're also taking the Got Your Back perk with us. With this perk, you reload not only your weapon, but the weapon of the entire team by killing an enemy that isn't focused on you. The best way to proc this perk and to stay off the enemy's radar is by standing behind your teammates. The AI in this game has a tendency to target players closest to them. Now, you might be wondering, well, where does our massive cooldown come from? Well, it comes from the back into the fight and the threat neutralized perks. Back Into the Fight is a perk modifier for the Got Your Back perk, which gives the entire team a 10% cooldown reduction on the remaining cooldown time. That's 3 seconds off of our support drone's cooldown for every enemy we kill that isn't targeting us. And Threat Neutralized shaves off another 15% for every enemy we weak point kill that was revealed. Together, that's a 25% reduction in cooldown that doesn't have a diminishing return mechanic. That's 8 seconds off of our support drone for each enemy we kill that was revealed and wasn't targeting us. This means that between 4 to 10 kills, we can get our support drone back. Now, you might have figured, but we only reveal with our bloodhounds. Wouldn't regular pups be better for this? Well, yes, but actually no. We can also reveal with our weapons as well, diving deeper into that later. And if you're not sure if weapons that can reveal also proc our Red is Dead perk, here's the proof. Mm. 
But since our weapons will be our main and only source of damage, we'll need perks to enhance their capabilities. We'll be taking the recon rifle training with us for the weak point damage and max ammo. The weak point damage synergizes well with our threat neutralized perk. Dock rifle expertise for more weak point damage, the added stability is a nice plus. Gunner rifle mastery for even more weak point damage, the added accuracy is a nice plus. Gunner rifle expertise for more fire rate and stability, the faster you fire, the higher your DPS. And recon rifle expertise for more fire rate, stability, and accuracy. Alright, it's time to tally everything up again. When everything procs, we'll get 20% extra max ammo, 25% extra fire rate, 25% cooldown reduction per kill, 35% extra duration on our support drone, 45% extra weak point damage, 75% extra accuracy, and a whopping 90% extra stability. But that's not all. We give our team a way of revealing targets with our weapons, Oprah levels of ammo supply, 10% cooldown reduction per kill, a 30% slow on enemies targeted by our bloodhounds, and enemies targeted by our bloodhounds receive 35% extra damage from all sources. When it comes to weapons, we have a large arsenal available to us. However, it is more limited than the dog's choices as we need a weapon that can also reveal targets. Therefore, weapons that can't reveal targets fall out of the boat. So no Astra and no Kramer. For the plasma rifle, go with the compensator for more fire rate and stability on hit. A rapid dispersal unit for more reload speed. When fully prog, the plasma rifle reloads in under a second. The faster you reload, the faster you get back into the fight. Eh, pun intended. And a laser sight in order to reveal targets. For the heavy assault, go with the assault break for more fire rate, accuracy, and stability. Compound magazines for more reload speed, magazine capacity, and a fire rate increase on hit. And a laser sight for the same reasons specified earlier. Alternatively, you can also go with the halberd and the plasma rifle if you so desire. If you're looking for a burst rifle, you can go with the grubba. And if you're looking for a DMR, you can take the scout rifle with you. However, I don't recommend sniping with the recon. Even though the recon lends itself well to sniping, it's not the best weapon to fight against the horde. It's better against the synths. But for that, I have another loadout. Foreshadowing... again... For the halberd and the pulse rifle, go with the assault break, compound magazines, and a laser sight. For the grappa, go with the compensator, compound magazines, and a laser sight. And for the scout, go with the tanker muzzle break for more weak point damage and a chance to stun. The assault magazine for more fire rate and reload speed. And a laser sight. When it comes to CQWs, we have even less options. The only weapons that can reveal are the plasma discharger, the MP11 storm surge, and the tactical shotgun. Out of those three, I would suggest taking the tactical shotgun. For a tactical shotgun, go with the assault break, compound magazines, and a laser sight. If you don't want your CQW to reveal targets, we have more options, and then I would suggest taking either the pump shotty or the heirloom shotgun. For the pump shotty, go with the assault break, field reserves, and a hybrid sight. And for the heirloom, go with the assault break, expanded reserves, and a polygonal rifling mod. Polygonal rifling meshes very well with our other damage increasing abilities. While using Bloodhounds and the heirloom, we increase our team's damage to 45% instead of 35%. If it's AoE or after, you can pick up the Incinerator. For the Incinerator, go with the Flared Breach, Micro Dot Sight, and Polygonal Rifling. Combining the micro dot sight and polygonal rifling with your bloodhounds means that the incinerator does 55% extra damage. However, it's not the best way to kill big red elites, as the best way to kill them is by shooting their weak points, and the incinerator has no weak point damage. So out of the four suggestions, I actually recommend the heirloom standoff. It has the highest fire rate out of all the shotguns, and the damage increases combined with a gunner's overclock can make short work of the big red elites. For consumables, always go with cryo grids for more CC, and a vulnerability assessment drone for more team white DPS. If someone else is taking drones, you can swap yours out for hardened electroshock turrets. And this is the new, well, actually old recon build, which I have aptly named the Raptor. A support-oriented recon class, the Raptor can cripple enemies from afar while keeping the team stockpiled with ammo. Give this build a try and see how powerful it truly is. And thanks so much for watching, and if you want to see more Aliens Fireteam Elite builds, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss another upload. And I'll see you when I see you.